the first one to come in uh, was from John, and John's an experienced builder, and I, all the full reviews um, are in the store under uh, under the kit. Uh, so we're just going to go over some highlights, or we'll be here all all day. <laughs> so he says the attention to detail and documentation is above the norm. Well, thanks, John. We work hard at that. And he also says finding a good, affordable phono preamp that uses octals is hard to come by, and especially one that supports 6 and 12 volt variants. This is a very unique preamp. Well, yeah, um, and we designed it that way, of course. The, you know, a big part of why this preamp sounds so good is the sonics of the 6SL7 tube. My job as a designer is to, to just make it, allow it to work at its best. <laughs> so, um, so I can't take all the credit. Um, the sound um, quality from first plug in is very good. It is very quiet, especially for a two preamp. Yeah, our noise floor is down about at minus, 90, minus 56 dB, which, uh, to put it in, in a relative term, uh, as the designer for any preamp, I like to see um, a minus 60 dB as sort of the gold standard, but we're, you're always limited by the capability of the tube and minus 56 was about as close as I could get to 60 down with the 6SL7. Any high gain tube, especially the vintage types like the 6SL7, are going to have higher noise floors. It's just the way it works. In fact, many of the more modern versions of the 6SL7, the 12AX7, they're different tubes, but they very much the 12AX7 basically took over the role of the 6SL7 as um, a dual high gain triode, a dual twin triode. Okay, uh, what else does he say here? Um, he says, the bass and dynamics are excellent. Soundstage and imaging are really very nice with very stable placement of instruments and singers. There's a liveliness to it. I like that. Every, um, every uh, reviewer of our gear always brings um, diff a different approach and perspective. And it's worth looking at a number of reviews if you're considering the Phono preamp because it'll, it'll definitely inform you about a lot of things. Uh, it draws you in and makes you want to listen to the music. Man, as a... As a designer, when you get a review like that, it's it's just like a big pat on the back because everyone wants that. <laughs> everyone works hard for that. Um, well, not everyone. You know, the interesting thing is we're seeing um, we're seeing a lot of really weird designs uh, hitting the marketplace. People slapping tubes into a mixed uh, bag of solid state and tube gear. Uh, you know, all in the same chassis. Um, to uh, you know, amps advertise that they do everything. They're, they're a headphone amp. They're they're an integrated amp. Um, they wash the dishes. I mean, it's insane what's going on right now. People are putting tubes in and biasing them up um, at a, basically a non-operating point. It's it just doesn't make any sense. I, I have a feeling that they're just simply hoping that a, a tube and a piece of gear will sell it. So be really careful with what you buy, particularly if it's inexpensive, uh, a new a new name, nobody knows about it, and there's a couple of reviews that are suspect. <laughs> if it's cheap, it probably sounds cheap. Okay, um, I'm using the early Sylvania Loctals from Jim that he rebases as to Octals. I highly recommend these. Yeah, the Loctal, Sylvania Loctal 6SL7s and uh, equivalents and uh, 6SN7 equivalents, they were an incredible find. Charles came up with this idea maybe two years ago. He said, Dad, we really should think about trying to figure out how to use these. And we first used adapters and they worked, but they weren't the best. 
but the rebasing um wow the uh, i swear the tubes sound better rebased as octals than they did uh stuck in adapters um let's just slide this up this phono preamp is a keeper and certainly an outstanding bargain. Highly recommend it. John F. Well, thanks, John. That's, it's a great review. I hope everyone takes the time to read the whole thing. Okay. Who's next? Uh, this is from Rasmus. And you have to bear with me. I'm reading upside down. Well, I'm not really. I have a cheat sheet beside me. But um, it sounded better that way, didn't it? I really like the philosophy behind the design with the modular setup for easy repair upgrades and the approach with minimal parts in the signal path. Yeah, absolutely. You got it. Bang on short signal pass, um, uh, repairable, upgradable, uh, every piece of audio gear should be done this way. Um, and I have no idea why, um, why the, the the buying public isn't demanding it, especially on gear that s sells for two and three times what, what our kits sell for. And by the way, that you might look at the kits and say, you know, that can't be audiophile grade. It's, you know, it's only 800 bucks. Uh, well, remember, you're, you've still got to build it. So we looked at this and we thought, how much would these sell for if we were to have an assembly bench and build them? Uh, build them professionally, of course, but most of our tests, most of our, most of the kit builders do it uh, as leaps as good a job as we do on our bench, and we build these things all the time. Um, and we would sell them for at least double the price. So you're looking at almost a two thousand dollar piece of gear. So you know um, it better sound pretty good. Um, so. What's he say here? He says, this kit was by far the best and easiest to assemble of the ones that he's had experience with. So, yeah, and we've, with the help of our test builders, we've continuously improved um, the assembly of the kits. We, we get tips from test builders about little tricks that they uh, found that helped them. There's things that we can do really quickly on the bench that we're used to doing that uh, a first time builder or a builder who's only built a couple of kits struggles with a little bit. And we'll get tips on how to get through those things. And, and of course, we'll incorporate them in future build videos. Uh, the first thing that hit me was the holography, just the 3D feeling of everything. It is better than my digital sources. A couple of pretty good DACs. Yeah, um, this really floored me. Um, we have a good digital side in our system, and it was dominating because it sounded better than the vinyl system. And um, we, uh, we've been running a, a variety of uh, phono preamps. I had an earlier um, prototype in the system for a while. Um, and then Charles chopped it up to make another prototype of something else. But anyways, um, we, we were mostly digital for a, quite a while. And, um, and it was the, the big impetus behind designing a really good sounding phono preamp was for ourselves. <laughs> anyways, the digital system sucks now. It, it doesn't even come close to the quality of the analog side. And I thought, this, this is just not possible. Um, so that actually got me started doing work in the digital domain. And I'm not going to say anything more about it because um, I'm going to be totally self-taught. I'll bring some of my experience with um, designing uh, tube gear over to the digital domain, of course. But I've got a lot to learn. And I'm going to have to do a number of prototypes before I can see if I really can, if I have the chops to do it. But I am determined to do something better on the digital side because it's ridiculous how bad it sounds compared to the phono side. And we thought the digital side sounded good at one point. So anyways, perspective changes as gear changes. Instrument, instrument placement is so good with this amp and it's very, very musical. I find myself wanting to, to test listen to a certain track and then end up listening to the entire album. Yeah, that's, that is a thing. If, if 
if you find a piece of gear that does that for you, then hold it close <laughs> and never loan it to a friend <laughs> unless, unless you want to go out and buy another one. Um, that's my rule of loaning things to, to friends. I never loan anything. If they, if they, uh, if they covet something and I can, uh, and I can give it up, I, I give it and I say, you know, that here, it's a gift. Take it. <laughs> Run. <laughs> I highly recommend this kit, both for the joy of building it and, of course, for the stellar sound. Rasmus. Well, thanks a lot, Rasmus. This is another really good uh, review from a different perspective, and we really appreciate the time that you took for uh, writing this up. It's... Okay, now, full disclosure, the last of the three reviews to come in is uh, from a longtime uh, customer, someone that I've corresponded with now for years. Um, she's an audiophile. She's very detail oriented. She knows her stuff. Um, she's really involved in the community. And somehow we got talking about the coming phono preamp and one of us ended up suggesting that it would be great if she would review it. I don't even remember who or even how it happened. But I said, look, we're going to be building um, a second unit for the build series I build what essentially is kit number one and I film it and that becomes you know the build manual so I said why don't I build um, a 230 volt AC household mains unit for you she's um, she's based in Australia and um, and of course much of the, the world is on high voltage on the 220 to 240 volt mains it's only in uh, the U.S. and Canada and a few small regions of the world that are on the 120 volt region, uh, 120 volt mains. So anyways, so that's exactly what we did. Uh, so she didn't build it, um, but she ended up having to deal with some problems with uh, ground noise. And I'm not going to go over that, but she talks about it at length. And we talked a little bit about ground issues with turntables um, in an earlier video. So... Um, so yeah, so let's see what uh, Rachel has to say. And she got uh, the exact same set of tubes that the test builders got. In fact, she basically got the same amp, just assembled. So, um, as, and there's a lot of detail here that's well worth reading. But let's go into the highlights. The phono preamp had a little more sparkle in the top end, while brass instruments were presented with a very pleasing amount of bite. The human voice, both male and female, is also beautifully natural, while the bass is surprisingly articulate with a satisfying amount of texture and tone. Well, I think I spent at least a quarter of the design hours working on the bass. And the, if you know anything about uh, um, the RIAA curve and how the bass is dropped 20 dB, and the treble is increased 20 dB, uh, 20 dB down at 20 hertz, and 20 dB up at 20 kilohertz. Anyways, that gives you your slope. Re-establishing 20 dB down bass is not easy. Now, you can sort of hodgepodge it, or you can do it properly. And I was determined to do it properly, and God, that took time. But when we got it right, Holy smokes, what a difference to the sound. Bass, the bass frequency response of any system um, is the foundation of a great musical experience. Okay, let's get moving here. We're running out of time. We're probably over time. Anyways, I apologize. The sound staging ability is also excellent and is, as is usual with vinyl records, the variation in mastering quality is very hit and miss, but given the right recording, of which I have many, the phono preamp is easily capable of expanding the soundstage beyond the bounds of the speakers. Not only this, but instrument placement across the soundstage is also quite pre precise. Presumably this has a lot to do with the decision to utilize a dual mono topology. Yes, absolutely. When I built a prototype preamp years ago, and I said, I want to find out what this dual mono business is all about. And wow, 
within seconds of turning it on, I thought, holy smokes, you get a much, much better stereo separation. And of course, that leads to a better defined sound stage, instrument placement, um, you know, vocalists, how they're positioned in the sound stage. Everything improved right away. So why doesn't everybody do this? Well, it costs money, of course. And, you know, you have to fuss with the design. You got to double up almost all the components in the power supply. So, yeah. So it's about the bucks. And, you know, frankly, I really don't care that much about the money. I just want to bring great sound uh, to our customers. Okay. So this Phono preamp is very dynamically alive. Yes. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's, that hits it. That's exactly what we were trying to strive for. I also love the sound of piano. And again, I was not disappointed as it was reproduced in a very realistic fashion. Piano is extremely difficult to record, but there are recordings that do get it right. And so too did the phono preamp. Yes, if you want to know um, if your gear is uh, particularly um, your analog side, your record, your turntable, your stylus, the internet cables, the phono pre, the, the whole schmo. If you want to know if, if your EQ, that's your equalization, is bang on or, or nice and good, let's say, because the EQ is never exactly right. It's never exactly right because the, uh, the slope, even though it's mathematically defined, is never reproduced perfectly, either at the mastering stage or at the reproduction end, you know, in your home. So, and everything affects that. Cables affect that. Um, component selection affects that to a lesser degree, but everything affects it. So, the piano is really, because the piano is a series of, of tones. So when you strike a piano uh, key, a note, um, you're actually striking four, three, or two strings, depending on the piano. A grand piano, I think, strikes in the upper register, strikes uh, four strings, the mid-range three, and the bass two, I believe. So you've got a lot going on um, sonically. And it's tough to reproduce, it's tough to record. So if you've got a known good recording of piano music, simple piano music in which there's good, very good clarity, uh, that's an excellent, excellent way to check to see if, um, if your gear is up to snuff. And we used um, a lot of piano recordings when we were checking the EQ. And uh, when the piano notes started ringing really true, we knew we had it. Okay. But with this added atmosphere, which I believe most people might describe as musicality, I know it's very cliche. I don't know. I like musicality. The phono preamp is an absolute pleasure to listen to, to, listen to music through. Yeah. Yeah. If you get the musicality right, um, you can actually have some other problems that you'll just simply ignore. But, you know, we try to do everything right. But the musicality, that, that was the very first thing that we were focused on. Okay, let's get through this great review and then we'll call it a day. <laughs> Still, with ex without exception, the Melatone Kit's Phono Preamps special sauce produced an experience that was totally captivating. Well, thanks, Rachel. Yeah. Um, I would agree with you on that. Uh, we just, I love listening to vinyl now so much. I always liked it a lot <laughs> and I've always had a, a good sizable collection, at least when I reestablished my good sizable collection. That's a sad story and I will not repeat it here, um, because this is just positive news today. <laughs> um, but I've been enjoying the vinyl side so much that I've expanded the record collection substantially. It's cost, this phono preamp has cost me some serious money. Um, but anyways, such is life. So in conclusion, uh, the Melatone kits phono preamp, uh, sorry, she says, is the Melatone 
kits, phono preamp, excellent for the money. A big fat no. Now, uh, when this review came in, um, Charles had beat, beaten me up in the morning and he already had a coffee going and he said, did you see the, the review from Rachel? Let me read you the, the conclusion. And he read just that and I thought, oh God, she didn't like it. And then he said, no, he laughed. He said the MTK phono preamp is excellent regardless of the money. And I do not believe that I can be any more complimentary than this. In a word, buy it, assemble it, and sit back and enjoy the music. It's really that simple. Rachel. Well, thanks a lot, Rachel. Um, you know, these, it's easy to look at these, these reviews um, and think, well, somebody just whacked that off in a couple of minutes. No, no, no. All these, all these longer, all these reviews take time. People have to think about what they want to say. Um, they have to do rewrites. Um, and, um, you know, but these are so valuable. If, if you, if you can't come into our music room and most of you can't, um, you're just taking our word for it. But when the reviews start coming in, well, you can read the reviews and you can start to understand the strengths and the weaknesses of the kit. Um, and then you can make a more, a much more informed decision. Okay, a big thank you to all the reviewers. Uh, we really appreciate all of your hard work. 